I want to be the very best so I can pay my bills. To catch them is my real test until my wallet fills. I will travel across the land, can't afford a home. Teach Pokemon to understand the power that I have to pay for every month. The phone bill, the internet, car payments, and then there's the house payment. Stop! No, just stop it! Stop! Stop the song! I'm just... I'm just sad now. Real life sucks. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory. <sighs> you know what? Screw this. I'm sick of paying bills every month. I'm sick of the rat races and the adpocalypses. It's time to leave behind all that YouTube drama and start traveling the land to catch animals and make them fight an eternal blood sport to the death. Uh, sorry, I meant to the faint, to the faint. It's much better. That's right, today we're talking about our favorite PETA triggering game, Pokemon. More importantly though, we're talking about how to make them Poke Bucks. Poke Dollars? Po Poke Skrill. Poke Bones! Poke whatever they are, the P with the two weird lines in it. Y you know what I mean. We've all had that dream though, right? To be teleported to the world of Pokemon armed with only a few Pokeballs and rise through the ranks to become a Pokemon champion? We'd make friends, thwart Team Rocket a couple times, maybe hit on Misty a little bit, or Brock, if you're into having no eyes. It'd be a great time! Or so we'd like to think. You see, video games tend to gloss over the rest of life that comes along with, you know, living. You'd still have to eat, sleep, use the bathroom, or whatever the most convenient tree in Viridian Forest is. Which means that all those hard-earned poke dollars you're ripping out of the pockets of the bug catcher after burning his metapod to a crisp are gonna have to pay them bills. So it got me thinking, how rich would you be if you became a Pokemon champion? What do the earnings of a Pokemon master truly look like? That's our question for today, so with that, Pokemon Johto, let's go. Game Freak, the developer behind Pokemon, doesn't give us basically anything for the day-to-day -day expenses for a Pokemon trader, but they did model a lot of the game's geography and culture to places IRL. I'm sure Gaijin Goomba did something on this in some video in the past. Hey Goomba, give me your notes! Stop! Thanks. For a guy with no arms, you throw surprisingly well. So, the regions of Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn are based on the real-life regions of Kanto, Kansai, and Kyushu found in Japan. Unova is based on New York, Kalos is northern France, and Alola is based off Hawaii. We even get hints that this is actually an alternate version of our own world. Parasect's Pokemon entry from Fire Red directly references China. To quote the Pokedex, It scatters toxic spores from the mushroom cap. In China, the spores are used as herbal medicine. This is further shown with the first entry for Lieutenant Surge in the Fame Checker that calls him the Lightning American. So with both China and America confirmed as countries in the game, it seems safe to assume that we can easily compare the cost of living in Pokemon with the cost of living in our own world. That means we need to figure out the exchange rates from Poke Dollars to real life Skrilla to figure out some sort of yearly income. To get the most accurate conversion, we're actually going to be starting by converting Poke Dollars to Japan's currency, the yen. The reason that I wanted to start here is that in the original Japanese versions of the games, the currency used is, in fact, yen. And the symbol used is, uh, this. Line, box, line. The kanji for yen. The Pokemon dollar was just created for the English translations of the games. But staying true to its yen roots, it kept the similar symbol, the P with two lines through it, as well as the yen's lack of decibels. But that's not all. We can even get an insanely accurate conversion rate of real yen to in-game yen using the nice, cold, refreshing taste of lemonade. Could've been you, Diet Coke, but you never write me back. Come on, Coke! I need that sweet brown liquid in my mouth! Friend. Throughout every Pokemon game in the series, you can find a vending machine or store selling three different drinks. Bottled water, soda, and lemonade. These prices are consistent across the entirety of the Pokemon universe, from Pokemon Red and Blue all the way to the newest re-release of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. What we're most interested in, though, is lemonade, or in the Japanese versions, Miku Suore. 
Yeah, it sounds about right. Line, 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 swoop, swoop, line, swoop, Naruto run, one-legged balance, and stupid L. You see, when translating the game, the drink was actually turned to lemonade, but the Japanese versions translate closer to mix au lait, which is a French term that translates to mixed with milk. And wouldn't you know it, but you can actually purchase mix au lait at Pokemon centers throughout Japan in real life. During one of my last trips to Japan, I actually visited one of these Pokemon centers to sample some of the food. Everything there is so super cute. The mix au lait, in case you're wondering, is a fruity milk drink that reminds me a lot of Lassi, if you've ever had that. It's kind of a watery, fruity yogurt drink. But as you would expect, everything at the Pokemon Center, including the mix au lait, was super overpriced and totally tourist crappy. So instead, to stay as true to the game as possible, I found that there were vending machines actually selling cans of mix au lait for the low, low cost of 150 yen. Compare that to the in-game cost for lemonade at 350 Poké Dollars, and we're actually able to get the conversion rate of 2.33 three poke dollars to one yen. Basically what that translates to is one poke dollar equal to just under half of a real world yen. Or to translate that to dollars, a hundred poke dollars is equal to about 39 US cents. So now knowing that, before we calculate how much we earn as a Pokemon trainer, we should figure out the costs of being a Pokemon trainer. Thanks to Sun and Moon, we know that the Pokemon world functions on the same 24 hour time cycle that our own Earth functions on. Sun shows us that day in the real life is day in game, and the same with night. So with that in mind, I headed over to howlongtobeat.com, which is a website that tracks how long to beat games, pretty self-explanatory there, to find the average time to beat a typical Pokemon game. That turned out to be 52 hours. So if you were to work the average workday of 8 hours, your journey would take you 7 days. But 7 days to be a fully-fledged Pokemon master doesn't seem right. I mean, sure, in-game you might be able to speedrun your way to the top of the Poke Charts, but if we're looking at this seriously, like literally walking between cities, battling trainers, spending time to train up your Pokemon, a trainer's journey to the top is gonna last way longer than a week. So instead, to figure this out, I followed a different trainer's journey. Ash from the anime. Sure, we all joke that Ash stayed 10 years old for 20 years of the show, but if you stop and look at the narration and context clues, there is in fact a clear passage of time that gives us a sense of how long Ash's Kanto journey takes him. According to Takeshi Shudo, creator of the Pokemon anime, in Pallet Town, the rule is that new trainers begin their journey on April 1st following their 10th birthday. In episode 9, The School of Hard Knocks, we actually hear that Ash has had two months of experience and two badges. With two months of Pokemon experience, you got two badges with only three. Now fast forward to the episode Holiday Hijinks, which, according to official numeration, is episode 39. That puts us at Christmas of Ash's first year as trainer. Another handful of episodes later, we have Princess vs. Princess, which we know is set on March 3rd, because it specifically refers to the celebration of Hinamatsuri, also known as Doll's Day or Girl's Day, a special day in Japan dedicated to celebrating women. That trip to Cinnabar Island for badge number seven takes place during the early summer, and shortly thereafter, after we learned that earning his 8th badge, the Indigo League is only two months later. The Pokemon League only meets once a year in the exact same place. Where is it? When is it? You gotta tell me! Atop the Indigo Plateau, exactly two months from today. Which places the yearly Indigo League championships around July or August. In short, Ash, and quite honestly Gary, who we also see in Showdown at the Poke Corral, that specific episode, have their first shot at being a true Pokemon Master a year and three months after they started their journeys. You know, now that I've done that, I bet I can calculate how old Ash is for the entirety of the series. If you want to see that episode sometime in the near future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments below, I want Ash's age in the next three seconds. Three... Two, if that was annoying to you, at least it wasn't a mid-roll. According to online cost-to-raise-a-child calculators, the cost of a single parent raising a 10-year-old in the Kanto region of Japan for 15 months is gonna be about $12,000. That translates to a million three hundred twelve thousand one hundred twenty-eight yen, or just over three million poke dollars. Jeez! With it costing that much, it's no wonder that the parents are sending their kids out into the woods to fight dangerous creatures for the better part of a year. Anyway, those costs are broken down like you see on screen. But remember, this is if they're living at home. Ash stays intense most nights and doesn't get himself an education, so we can eliminate some of those larger ticket costs. Let's even eliminate the cost of clothing, since the most Ash has ever gotten himself is like, a new hat. That cuts our costs for his 15-month journey in half, now sitting at $6,000, 656,000 yen, or 1.5 million Pokebucks. That is a whole bike and a half 
which doesn't make it sound like that much, but seriously, that is a $4,000 bike that the shop owner just gives you for free. It is the best free voucher ever. Okay, so $6,000 is the base cost of your journey. I'm, of course, leaving out the prices of all Pokemon-related gear. Pokeballs, revives, potions, food for the Pokemon, etc. But then again, Ash tends to get himself distracted on his journey, so his quest may take him a little bit longer than your typical trainer. It should all balance out in the end. Now it's time to start beating up on some random kids' pets and stealing their cash. The way to earn money as a Pokemon champion is defeating other trainers and taking their money. I went through the entirety of Pokemon Red and Blue, adding up what you earn from every battle, each psychic, bug catcher, and lass out there, and then double check that amount via some player guides for the games. And if you go undefeated against every random trainer on your journey, you conquer every gym the first time, and you send every member of Team Rocket, you would make a total of, drum roll please, Three hundred twenty-five thousand four hundred fifty poke dollars, which equates to one hundred and fifty-six thousand two hundred and sixteen yen, or only one thousand four hundred twenty-one dollars and fifty-seven cents. Uh, honestly, I expected it to be much, much higher when putting this theory together. But then I stopped and thought about it, and it actually makes a lot of sense. Just take, for instance, the Elite Four, which should be the most profitable fights in the game. Sure, earning 5,000 Poké Dollars per fight sounds great, but not so much when you're shelling out $350 for a Feeboss and Lemonade. The Elite Four plus the Rival Battle gets you a total of 29,799 Poké Dollars, which sounds great until you consider that it's only only 85 cans of soda from the vending machine. It converts to a whopping $117. And that is the top of the top. We are talking the Elite Flippin' Four. And don't forget, this is just the base adventure. If you're doing the Pokemon journey a second time, I don't think Team Rocket has the turnaround time to take on the Sylph Company every week. Plus, Misty isn't gonna take you on again if you already have her badge. So if you take out the special events that you most likely wouldn't be able to do again, like the Sylph Company takeover in the gyms, the journey actually pumps out significantly less, 187,069 Poké Dollars, or $729.57. Ooh, that is a hefty pay cut. Literally cut in half. And I'm not even including the trainers who aren't gonna fight you again since you beat them so badly the first time. The long story short here is that being a Pokémon trainer is the single worst financial decision in gaming ever. You spend a year out of your life slaving away, climbing to the pinnacle of your chosen field, living outdoors and getting shocked, over and over and over again by Pikachu, and you end up with a net loss of $4,578.43. You lose money on your journey even if you get to the end of it. Honestly, it's like pursuing a career in theater where most places make you pay them to work there. Good times. True story. All this is probably why you don't see too many adults out there trying to become Pokemon champions. They eventually have to support a family, and that is simply something that you cannot do as a traveling bad. Battler. Unless you're a gym leader or part of the Elite Four, there is no way to make a living off of being a Pokemon champion. Chase your dreams, just prepare to file for bankruptcy later. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. And we didn't even talk about taxes. Don't even get me started on taxes. But now that we've proved that my backup career isn't gonna be backing me up quite as much as I hoped it would, I'm gonna have to figure out a new way to save up some serious bucks. Luckily, I know about Honey. My favorite free browser extension and the sponsor for this episode is here to save us some cash. Seriously, they save me money on practically everything that I order online, which means my hard-earned Poké Dollars can buy more when I'm ordering stuff from places like Amazon, Google Buy, or wherever Snorlax candy comes from. Nine million people, the equivalent of nine out of ten theorists if you go by subscriber numbers on this channel, have already downloaded Honey, which automatically finds and applies coupon and promo codes from all across the internet on every single purchase that you're making. That means that you don't have to do anything or download anything from sketchy websites, but you may just end up getting free shipping or a discount that you didn't know existed on all the things that you are already buying. It's completely free, it takes only a few seconds to download, and it works immediately. I mean, look at this. This is a screenshot of me buying over a thousand dollars worth of furniture for the baby room. And Honey saved me nearly 400 bucks. And that's it. There are no 
strings attached, there is nothing that you have to buy. It is just literally designed to save you money. If you want to give it a try, which you should because there's really no reason not to, you can download it for free in just a couple of seconds right here at joinhoney.com slash matpat. M-A-T-P-A-T. That's joinhoney.com slash M-A-T-P-A-T. Or you've been on YouTube a couple times, you know the link is in the first line of the description. You've been here before, you can do it. And while it might not save you enough to make up for all that money you're losing on the road to becoming a Pokemon champion, it can certainly make those Pokegym dollars go a whole lot further. So get on it, theorists. Be the best like no one ever was at saving money online and let Honey help you do it.